All right, so if the game, if the extensive form game, uh, have those five ingredients, uh, N the set of players, H the set of histories, P the player function, beta C is the, the chance probability distribution, I uh, the information partition, and the utility function or the von Neumann Morgenstern uh, utility function for every player. Well, we collect all of those ingredients and call it as an extensive form game. And once we ignore the payoff functions, the remaining structure is we call it extensive form. All right. Well, if the number of histories in this game is finite, well, then the game is finite. All right. Uh, well, the number of histories can be finite if all, well, the, the number of players is finite already. Uh, we assume that. Uh, so if the number of histories is finite, that means the, the number of available actions for each player is finite because the histories are some sort of a combination of uh, available actions, right? So for that reason, we call it finite game. However, in order to talk about infinite horizon or finite horizon, meaning whether the game is ever ending or not, like the repeated games, uh, infinite horizon repeated games, well, we look at the length of each history. Well, what is the length of a history? Well, simple. If I have a history, a k, a sequence, right? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, k from 1 to capital K, where K is less than infinity. Well, the length of this history is just capital K. All right. So if the length of all the histories is finite, well, then we call this a finite horizon game. Otherwise, meaning if there exists at least one history which has a, a length of infinite, well, we call it infinite horizon game. Well, if all the information sets are singleton, meaning there's only one uh, 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 history in each uh, information set, well, then we call this perfect information game, meaning every player can observe all the previous actions before him. All right, so the, all the histories are perfectly observable. That's what it means in a perfect information game. Otherwise, meaning if there's a, at least one information set in a, having more than a, one uh, history, well, we call it imperfect information game. In an imperfect information game, the information is imperfect because for some players, uh, he may not distinguish the history. I mean, w what happened previous to my action? I don't know it. I'm not sure about it. If this is the case, we call it game with imperfect information. What else? Well, uh, we are not going to cover this in this uh, course. Uh, however, a, a very important uh, extensive form games are extensive form games with incomplete information, meaning uh, some players cannot observe uh, uh, not only some players' actions, but also the nature's choices, all right? So this is how we mathematically define it. So if there exists some history which belongs to the nature, meaning after this history H, the nature moves, all right? Could be a null history. Um, two actions, a, H, a, 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 a prime, all right? And again, if there exists such a history, such two actions, a, a prime, and some information set, all right? I don't know what player it belongs to, but some information set such that the following two histories are in the same info set. Uh, what are those histories? Well, after history, the nature moves and choose a, and, and, and then something happens, H prime. So H prime is not a history, it's just a sequence of actions, all right? Meaning history H occurred, nature chose A, and then something happened, that something is H prime. And in the other uh, uh, history, uh, again, history H happened, nature this time chose instead of A, A prime, and then something uh, occur, H double prime. H double prime and H prime can be the same thing, can be different things. We don't know, we don't care. But the thing is, if these two histories are in the same info set, which belongs to some player, well, that means that player cannot distinguish the nature's move. Maybe he can also cannot distinguish the other player's move. We don't know, but he cannot distinguish and whether nature took action A or A prime. Well, then we call this game game of incomplete information. Okay? 
Okay, let's work on this example and see how we can uh, describe each one of those uh, terms uh, like n, h, z, the information partition, etc. So this is the game uh, tree. There are two players, as you see, player one moves first, choose left and right, then player two moves. Uh, depending on player one's action, uh, player two either chooses between X and Y or W and Z. And then uh, after player two moves, player one cannot observe player, one, uh, player two's actions. Um, but however, uh, if player one has chosen left, well, player one's options are either B or F. And if player one has chosen R, then the player one's actions are either C or D. Okay, well, there are two players, so we denote N as, uh, you know, the set one, two. Well, what about the set of histories? Well, this game has a lot of histories. All of them are finite. Uh, well, always the, the null history or the initial history is one of them. Player one playing left or right, these are two other histories. And then player one playing left, player two is playing X. So LX is one history. Symmetrically, LY is another history. And while this time player one is playing R and then player two is playing W is one potential history, right? RX or RY, these are not a part of history in this game because after R, Player two doesn't have an option of playing X or Y, okay? So R, W, well, what else? Well, now player one choose L and then two plays X and then player one chooses B, right? So L, uh, X, B, and obviously L, X, F, L, X, F, and then obviously uh, symmetrically L, Y, B, L, Y, F, so I'm not going to uh, fill up the rest, but you got the idea, I hope. R, W, C, R, W, D, R, Z, C, and R, Z, D. Okay, so these are all possible set of histories. Well, what about the set of terminal histories? Well, those are histories where the game is over. Obviously, the null history, left, right, or L, X, L, Y, these are not terminal because after L, Y, for example, player one has the option of choosing an action. So it's not the end of the game. So in this game, uh, for example, L, X, B is a terminal history. All right, so L, X, B, because after player one playing B, uh, well, the payoffs. And then symmetrically, L, Y, F is a terminal history. What else? As I said, L, Y, B. L, Y, B is a history. And then, well, this is X, I'm sorry. And then L, Y, uh, F is a history. Well, in fact, there are four more uh, terminal histories. R, W, C, R, W, D, R, Z, C, R, Z, D. Okay, I'm not going to fill them up, but you got the idea. All right, what else? Well, we can talk about information partition, but let's first about uh, talk about the information partition for player two, all right? Well, how many information set does she have? Well, she has two information sets. Well, one of them is this one. The other one is this one, or this decision node, or that decision node. So how do we denote them? Well, remember the information sets are, are like I, and they contain histories. Well, this decision node is going to contain only one history, which is L, and this information set is going to contain only one history, and it's R. So therefore, this is the information partition for player two. So she has two information sets. Both of them are singleton, meaning she can observe her past perfectly. Well, what about information partition of player one. It's going to be a bit more complicated. Well, first off, obviously the information set that includes the uh, initial this, uh, history, right? Or the initial node. So it's this one. Okay, so this is one of the information set he has. What else? Well, also here, this is player one's another, the second information set. This is the third information set. All right, so Remember, player one is moving three times, potentially, overall, three times in this game. Here, here, and here, or here, all right? So it's not and, obviously. If he chooses left, he will never have the chance to choose or play here. All right, so therefore, here, and here, or here. Okay, well, nevertheless, I have to describe all these three info, info sets. This is the first one. 
What about the second one? The second one, however, again, each info set has histories. So all the histories that are ending up in the same info sets. So, well, two of those histories end up in the same info set, LX and LY. So therefore, the second info set is LX, the history LX, and then history LY. Both of them are ending up in the same info set. All right, what about the third one? Well, the third one, uh, I don't have a space, so let me write it here. RW, that also, that history also end up in the same info set with RZ. Okay, so that's it. That's the information partition for player one. Well, what about the information partition of all the players? Well, it's basically information partition of player one and player two. Okay, so I'm not going to write it because it's just a repetition. All right, what about the player function? Well, player function basically maps each history and or info sets to a player. Well, here there's no nature playing, so only player one and two. So uh, what is the player who moves at the beginning of the game? Well, it's player one, as simple as this. Well, I am going to use not histories, but info sets. What about, uh, I mean, who, who plays or choose an action after the history L or after this information set? Well, obviously after history L, player two moves. All right, so after, well, symmetrically after uh, history uh, right, uh, player two moves again, right? Well, what about this? Who moves after uh, uh, info set uh, LX and LY? All right, again, this is player one. So you can remember you can use p of i or p of h they're going to be the same thing as long as h is one of the histories in this information set i all right so similarly for this info set which player moves well it's player one okay so that's that's how we uh sort of pull out this player function from the given uh, game tree well, obviously, if you're not given the game tree, but just this description, you can uh, go back, sort of a reverse engineering, and then create the game tree, right? because they're equivalent. Well, finally, what is the payoffs? Well, the player one's payoff and player two's payoff depends on the history, right? A terminal history. For example, player one's utility after history L. This is not well defined because remember, after L, the game is not yet over, and we did not define the preferences over uh, unfinished game. We defined preferences over finished part of the game, meaning terminal history. So therefore, if you want to talk about payoff, well, you have to give me a terminal history first. For example, LXB. What is the utility if the terminal history is LXB? Well, simple, right? Player 1 gets 4. Player two gets LXB um, two. What is the payoff of player one if the terminal history is RWD, for example, RWD? Well, just simple, follow the RWD. Well, you end up five and player two end up zero, all right? Um, so exactly this way, what is the payoff of player one after history, terminal history RZC? Well, it's zero for player one and five for player two. As simple as this.